Hello, so my name is Grant and welcome to Maker's Vlog. So, I have a project at the minute where I am putting a solar panel on my car. Now, you might be asking, why are you putting a solar panel on your car? And that's an excellent question, well asked. So, my car is tiny. It's a city car, it's a Peugeot 107, I think. 107, 108, I can't remember offhand, but tiny car. And as such, it has a tiny battery. And recently, uh, well, I say recently, it was ooh, last year, uh, whenever it was going through its annual checks, its MOT, um, the battery was a bit dodgy. And this year it died, so I had to replace it. Now, as some of you may know, I quite like my uh, radios, amateur radio and all that good stuff. And I was looking to put one, in a radio, that is, a VHF radio into the car. But I don't want to run it off the battery, um, the car battery, because it's such a small capacity. If I... If I leave it on by accident, leave the radio on or some such, um, or something like that, or even I'm just transmitting for a long time without the engine running, I could kill the battery very, very easily. So what I was thinking was I could put um, a battery or two in the boot of the car and have them trickle charged or charged by a solar panel. That's the theory. Now, the solar panel that I have is one of the wee ones that you would use for trickle charging the car where you just you know, put it into the cigarette lighter and leave it on the dashboard. So it does not generate a whole lot of power. Um, I don't know what the wattage is on it. It doesn't actually say. I, I could work it out with the multimeter. I can't be asked. But it's small. I, I know for a fact it's tiny. So I may be upgrading that at some point. But for now, at the very least, it, it's workable. I've had it out. I've tested it. But I'm going to do a video of me actually um, putting it all in properly and neatly. At, at the minute, it was just chucked into the back of the car. So I got this which is a solar charge controller, ignore the cables. Um, now this is kind of the wrong one, I ordered the wrong one a bit. Um, this one is rated for 20 amps at either 12 or 24 volts. I had meant to get a 40 amp one, hence the nice big beefy wires, which I'd already gotten. Um, these, I believe, are rated for about 48 amps or thereabouts doesn't say on them I don't think no it does not no it does not say um, it's uh, I think four millimeter wire yeah something like that my original plan was to overcompensate for it um, essentially um, any radio that I use is probably only going to be 10 amps it's going to be its maximum draw usually um, wouldn't really need any more than that it might depending but I'm working off the assumption that it'll probably only draw about 10 amps at max whenever I'm pressing the press but I wanted to be able to have the ability to put more things in there so if I take this car out to say a radio rally where I might be there for a few days and I'm maybe running an HF radio off it I wanted to be able to, the ability to plug something else into this and it still be able to handle it okay without um, burning wires or blowing this. So I was planning to get a 40 amp one. Um, I got the 20 amp, but the 20 amp will work fine for a VHF radio and it may even work fine for an HF radio provided I'm not running them all at the same time. Um, the cable I got, I had it so that it was rated for 40 something amps. So it's fine, now this is really long, I'll be cutting this to size because I will be having um, essentially the larger wire running from the battery to the controller and to the controller to a fuse box which is this so i'll just take the lid off this is this one here Ta -da. so this is the fuse box and i'm going to have the larger wires running to this and then i'll just be using standard wire whatever i've got handy and um, i think we've got quite small low amperage wire there um, and that will be running to the uh, to the devices so I'm going to record doing that. Um, I'm still waiting on one more part coming, which is a couple of battery terminals that I can actually screw on and screw devices onto. I need something in my hand. Um, so yeah, I'm still waiting on them coming. They should be here either today or tomorrow, so I'm, I'm just laying the groundwork for the meantime. Um, I'm also going to do a video on how the solar charger works. Uh, I'm going to be recording this immediately after this. And... Um, I'll also get you in for a close up here in a second of what way I'm wiring it up. Uh, so yes, I will be back in a second. 
Okay, so apologies for wobbly camera here, but I thought I'd just quickly, before I go out and actually start putting things on, um, because I have to use the other camera because it's outside and you know, all that good stuff, and it might be there a while. Um, so I thought I'd just quickly show how this is going to be wired up. So I've got my solar charge controller in here, this connector here. That is going to go into the solar char uh, solar panel, which is already in the car. Um, I'll show you that in a second, and that cables just came out, excellent. Um, these two cables, uh, which are rated for about 46, 48 amps or thereabouts, these are going to go to the battery, which the terminal's just arrived today. Then from, put that over there, and then from here, this is the load. So this is where all of the power is going to come out and go into everything else. From here, I'm going to use the same cable, because these are quite long, so I'm going to cut these and use a bit more of these to go into here. So it's going to be positive into positive, negative into negative, and that will then power here. And then I can connect the positive, let me out of the road, uh, the positive into one of these terminals here and the negative into here, and I'll then take it back to take it back to negative um, and then that that's, that's this is going to be the main sort of terminal for all the other power going out so the uh, the main thing that's going to be connected is ignore this this is for the robot and um, this little boy over here which uh, yeah cables are down there and um, so this will then be ran into here um, temporarily this radio is not mine this is uh, lent to me by my friend so this will not be getting permanently mounted um, it'll just be getting put in for the meantime until I get one of my own. Um, so yes, let's go out and uh, get started putting all this in.
What do you think? What do you think of the radio? Hmm? You good? Nah, I don't care. Okay, so, lift this up a bit. In here. See, battery. Oh, I can see the solar controller. Uh, you would have seen it better in the old. And then down there is the radio. And the well, fuse box. So let's see if she works. About 28 volts. Cool. Yeah. Let's see. So we've got a handheld here. Does it receive? More importantly, does it transmit without blowing a fuse? Cool, loud noise. But yes. So yeah, works without blowing a fuse. So there you go. So that's the uh, solar car done. More or less, um, the, uh, the the VHF radio that I was using um, it was unknown from a friend, so I didn't mount it. But um, seeing how easy it was to use those wee hook and loop strips, um, the wee Velcro type ones to mount things on the inside. Um, I don't know whether you actually seen that bit because the camera that I was using fucking cut off about twenty minutes in. Um, so you may have missed that. I sent if if you did, I haven't reviewed the footage yet. If you did miss it, essentially I just used um, like Velcro on the backs of the solar con solar controller and the fuse box and it actually just stuck to the material on the inside I didn't even need to do you know two sides and, and stick it um, if you've seen at the start I was looking to potentially mount them using velcro the same velcro strips but to the back of the chair and that way if I needed to drop the chairs I could just unvelcro them and set them down and, and drop the chairs um, but that would, that would have been annoying and the fact that it stuck so nicely to the to the sides um that that's what i went for so if you missed that that's that's what happened there um also if you noticed on the solar charge controller it was only showing the battery had two bars of power um and it was only supplying about 11.8 volts or thereabouts that's because that battery's fucked as well um as well as the smaller one that i have down there that i'm trying to breathe a bit of life back into but i got it working to a degree it's holding enough capacity it's just not holding a massive amount so it works fine for now. Um, I've had it just running that same radio, but in here um, for a good few weeks, um, just transmitting probably as much as what I would in if I had it mounted in the car. So happy days. Um, I don't know how quickly it will drain if it's transmitting regularly. I've, I've just been listening in here. Um, I haven't actually been properly talking, so it, it may kill it, it may not. Um, so that might be replaced at some point. The solar panel is a wee small one. Um, I don't think I got a, um, footage of it, but I'll put a picture of it here. Yeah, that one. Um, so a wee small thing just mounted on the side of the window. Um, the reason I put it on that window is because um, where I leave my car parked um, outside the house, um, that side gets the sun all day. And usually whenever I park up, I, I can try and make a conscious decision. Park with that side facing the sun if need be. Um, I do want to mount one on the roof and then have it trickle charge the main battery as well and have that hooked in, but I need to look on the legalities of having something like that mounted on the top of your car. You know, does it need to be um, fixed in a certain way so that you would make sure it doesn't come off? I don't know what the law is, so I need to double check that before I do anything because last thing I want is to be getting lifted by the pillars. Um, just realised pillars is police where I'm from we call them pillars probably confused half the fucking viewers there um, that's what we call the police pillars um, so yeah that's that's it that's it uh, done and dusted um, I'm going to be doing more stuff like that in the future because I really enjoyed doing that and it was I'm not going to say it was easy to do um, there was a bit of uh, planning in the back end and sort of working out okay what kind of cable do I need um what sort of amperage am I going to be putting through it and sort of trying to plan for the future. Um, so there's a bit of that, but actually doing it, that only took me uh, maybe an hour, hour and a half to put that all in. So I'm happy. 
so yeah if you liked it let me know and uh, I'll, I'll potentially do more in the future and i've been told to do this and i apologize but if you like this stuff please hit the subscribe button and, and like the video and share the video and youtube keeps complaining that i don't do that so that i don't plug that way so fucking there you go that's it that's it for like our 10 videos fucking do what you want um so yeah see you later